That, so you're asking how should we start competitive programming? Let me divide the whole competitive programming ability into three parts, creativity, knowledge, and implementation. But what I believe is you need some coach to get successful in competitive programming. If you rush, you learn everything, but you know nothing. I'm a teacher that doesn't teach anything at all. There are other world finalists like you. Of yeah, for sure. <laughs> of course there are. Uh, so, so I wasn't, if I was competing alone, I would get gold medal yeah, for sure. Yeah, of course, of course. Actually, I don't know myself, people like me. <laughs> yeah. So competitive programming is not a destiny, it's just a past. So there are some ex exceptions like me that we live in the past itself, but you need to pass the patch. So I like this job, okay? So when I was a kid, I wanted to grow up and become a teacher. It's my love. When I prepared my first contest on Coach Forces, I was just a kid, like 16 years old. I tried to leave. <laughs> he, he came with some reasons that we need to go for a medal in next year. So suddenly, my goal in just a few minutes, my goal changed from participating again to visit Moscow, uh, changed to let's go win a medal, which we were really close to it in most every week, at least 70 hours. Alongside, I had a job and also I married during that time. I saw people with typing like this, really like this, who won gold medal in Iran and then won silver medal in IOI. Prayuk asked a question, I repeat it for other people. He asked how many countries you traveled. So first country I traveled was Pakistan to, <laughs> uh, to participate in Lahore Regional Contest. That year we participated in Tehran and also Lahore at the same time. And next one was Portugal, which ICBC World Finals held in it. And next one was Iraq for just religious reasons. And next one was Russia for ICBC World Finals again. And next one was Turkey because I was a judge in European Girls Olympiad of Informatics. Next one was Syria, that I was coach for the national team going to International Olympiad of Informatics, high school students. And next one was Croatia, where I was there to a camp, something similar like this, but for European teams going to ICBC World Finals. And the last one is here that I'm currently in. Yeah, and, and you can go on. Yeah, so hi Alba, my name is Ishan, and most of us here are non-CPs. So uh, would you please tell the like to a non-CP how should they start their coding journey? Like a brief roadmap. Uh, so a very general question, right? Okay, I understand that. So you're asking how should we start company program? Yes. Okay. Consider the case that you ask some Olympic spinner who win medal in swimming how I should start swimming. So as competitive programming is in sport, so when you want to try for something, first of all, you need to know what kind of this is, okay? So competitive programming is not a science, for example. So you are not gonna read a lot of papers or documents or do some research, right? Problems are already solved in competitive programming. So let me ask you, for sure you are good in at least one sport, aren't you? Maybe badminton. Okay, so how did you play good in badminton? Playing casually with friends. Okay, so did you read any books about that? No. Okay, so here goes the same. So it's an sport, and in a sport, training matters the most. So all the time, like 99% of your time participating in CP would be just training, first of all. Then you need to understand that the way you train is very important. So it's not like if you want to learn swimming and go for Olympics, it's not just like you start swimming at random in swimming pool and hope for you'll someday win gold medal in Olympics, right? Let me divide the whole competitive programming ability into three parts, creativity, knowledge, and implementation. So these things grow each other actually, and you can't release your real power in any of them without help of other two. Like there might be a super intelligent person in this class, but he is unable to solve very basic problems. Why? Because his knowledge is very low and his implementation is ruined. So if you try to grow these three things together with good training method that I will try to say 
say something about it later. The thing is, there are some books written about that, so you can find Composite Programming Handbook and all. But what I believe is you need some coach to get successful in Composite Programming. So if you try alone, so I saw people that they try alone and even they achieve something very good, very worthy, but coach will for sure boost you two, three times. You don't have infinity time, right? You want to get some results in these three, four years. You don't want to continue Composite Programming forever, right? Like this. So it's possible that if you follow your own way, you get some result after 10 years, but you want it soon. So you need some coach. Coach will find and prove provide you list of problems one after one that you need to solve it. So some people, uh, especially people who don't have coach, rush to learn algorithm and that won't work. Because like I saw people who messaged me on Codeforces Live, I don't know how to solve that problem with heavy light decomposition. And I see that that guy is just great. So what I try to tell him immediately is please shift delete heavy light decomposition from your mind. You should not know heavy light decomposition for now. No. I didn't understand what you said just now. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> so it's an algorithm. Heavy light decomposition is an algorithm. And you should not learn it when you are like below 2100. So you need to first get master on code forces or at least candidate master, something like that, and then learn heavy light decomposition. If you rush, you learn everything, but you know nothing. You just need to learn very basic fundamental algorithms like sort then very basic graphs then uh, or maybe like dystra at the most and then like dp and dp and dp and practice a lot in just these five six topics a lot just like for six months one year just focus in these four or five topics that's it and these things will make your mind powerful and your problem solving skills appear and then you will go above like you will go around uh, 1800 and then when you reach 1800 you should start learning other advanced topics like segment three so i i see people like they, they are specialists and they know segment three and this should not happen and also from the vice versa i see some people that just naively open code forces sort by the muscle and solving one by one it's okay but just for 10 days after 10 days you should start learning something very easy like by research like dfs bfs graph simple graph algorithms like dynamic programming and so on and for that the thing is the hard things happens here that makes you to have some coach is you should not read and learn topics. Someone should give you a problem that with solving that, you discover algorithms on your own. Like if you see my teaching style, I'm a teacher that doesn't teach anything at all. So I come to the class, our classes are like weekly classes of learning something like three hours or more. So there is no rush. I come to the class, provide some problem, and I sit there. And the students try to attack this problem. They don't have enough tool actually. They attack and they attack. And from what I know from the students, they are very close to the level that they can make that tool. And eventually they make the tool and they solve the problem. And they teach themselves. So it can't be possible if you are on your own, okay? So you go open Dijkstra's algorithm on Wikipedia, or CP algorithms and you start reading and after you finish you start solving problems and this way your creativity is ruined because you already know what is Dijkstra when you are trying to solve that problem but like in the vice versa case it's like you see the problem you already know some basic algorithms but you don't know that algorithm needs to be solved this problem and you try to create the problem on your own like what Dijkstra did uh, dozens of years ago so Dijkstra invented that algorithm, right? You should be like Dijkstra and invent the algorithm again to be able to really solve the next problem. My second question is, like, uh, there are other world finalists like you. Of yeah, for sure. <laughs> of course there are. Uh, so, so I wasn't, if I was competing alone, I would get gold medal yeah, for sure. Yeah, of course, of course. So like, how do you get these opportunities? Like, you hosted ICPC, so how do you get these opportunities? Actually, I don't know myself. People like me. <laughs> so actually, there are a lot of people to choose for like different camps or judging or yeah. other stuff. But I don't know. I receive email that would you come train our students or would you come uh, prepare our contest? And sometimes I say yes and I, I do that. But the thing is, 
yeah, this is very important, I, I mean to say. You should not try competitive programming to become some, someone like me. So I am just an exception, but not the rule. Mm -hmm. So the rule is people come to competitive programming and then they use those skills somewhere else. Like they go become software engineer, backend developer, Android developer, data scientist, something like that. So competitive programming is not the destiny. It's just the past. So there are some ex exceptions like me that believe in the past itself, <laughs> but you need to pass the past, you understand? Yeah. So it's not the final destiny. So don't try to be someone like me. So I, I like this, so I, I could do many other things. So when I was, even I was a kid, I had a lot of job offers from famous companies, but I, I wouldn't accept that because I, I like teaching. So I like this job, okay? So when I was a kid, I wanted to grow up and become a teacher. It's my love. I like it, I like to be teacher. Teacher. When I prepared my first contest on Code Forces, I was just a kid, like 16 years old. I hold a contest on Code Forces because I love that thing. I, I really like to hold contests like that. So I like this stuff. Like in parallel that I was teaching here, I was the judge for some national competition in Iran too. And I, I was doing them in parallel. I like both things, but you shouldn't think that if I enter competitive programming, my destiny is like Arpa. No, you can go become whatever you love like go do artificial intelligence go do backend developer anything like that so that's important to understand my experience is there are some people who have question but they wait until others go out and they will come close and then ask questions so <laughs> uh, so those those questions aren't private but they feel a lot of pressure to ask questions i was afraid at first too you was afraid too yeah but you were selected to sit there so <laughs> <laughs> no no no, no. I, I sit up by myself <laughs> So, I tried to leave. <laughs> so my question is, did you ever felt like quitting or taking a break from CP? What I think is it's not recommended to quit and come back because when your age increases, motivation for sure goes down and also you find more and more things that will involve you and like you can't put that 16 hours that I said. So you need to make full pressure, find the result and quit. So if you break so somewhere in the middle, you will lose. So you, you lose something. Actually, when I entered university, first I somehow mm, had a break. So I uh, I was not participating in contests like so on. So I, I just wanted to participate in ICPC World Finals for fun and that's it. But Destiny was like, we participated in ICPC World Finals and after we came back from Portugal, I was just like, okay, we had one fun World Finals. Why not have another? But the game changer here was after we came back from Portugal, Goal. Our so our coach was one of our faculty members, one of professors. He invited us to his room and he asked us. He, he he came with some reasons that we need to go for a medal in next year. So suddenly, my goal in just a few minutes, my goal changed from participating again to visit Moscow, uh, changed to let's go win a medal, which we were really close to it in Moscow. So we were really close to winning medal as if we solved all of the easier problems, then the hardest problem that I solved during the contest, we would get a medal. So actually we didn't solve some easy problems and solve some hard problems instead. We were unlucky, we were just unlucky and we missed that. So I had something like one, one and a half year break after I entered university, but that motivation that came from that professor pushed me to come back and put so much time again for something like two years, every week at least 70 hours. Alongside, I had a job and also I married during that time. So all of that, but also putting uh, 70 hours per week, that was the full answer to your question. Thank you very much. The thing is, I saw people with typing like this, <laughs> really like this, who won gold medal in Iran, and then won silver medal in IOI, International Olympiad of Informatics. So typing for sure doesn't matter. So it's relation to competitive programming much be much, much less than how well you slept last night before the competition. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and ring that bell. By the way, YouTube thinks the video down here is just perfect for you. Give it a watch and let me know in the comments.